Peter, they're going to pull his head in the morning. He's in jail. They're fixing to cut his head off, smooth off in the morning. And he knows it. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he deceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. Jesus said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He was in faith. You never see when angelic deliverance happened in the Bible when people were in fear. It was always when they were in faith. In Luke, the 18th chapter, verse 1, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that a man ought always to pray and not faint, or not turn coward and give up, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, She came unto him. Did it say she kept coming? No. She came unto him, saying. Now, in other places it said, the, the, uh, talks about the disciples came to Jesus. They came to him, saying. Did that mean they, they, they came saying it, and went off, came back saying it, and came back saying it again? No, they were walking while they were talking. She came unto him, saying, Avenge me, mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me. Notice, he's only troubled now. I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Now notice, he's only troubled. What troubled him? Her voice. <laughs> A <laughs> little bony finger. You'll avenge me, my adversary. It was the authority in her voice, the faith in her voice. He knew this woman's coming back if I don't do something. Now, what if she'd come in there saying, Now, 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 Judge, <laughs> I don't want to bother you, but if you could find it sometime where it wouldn't inconvenience you. If you could just give me a little relief from my adversary. Oh, I'd appreciate it so much, but now I don't want to trouble you. You think, what do you think he had done? He said, get out of here, woman. I have got time for you. But he knew this woman's coming back if I don't do something. Now listen to this. <laughs> he said, uh, he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, he's only troubled, he's not, he's not weary yet, I will avenge her less by her continual coming. He can tell by the sound of her voice. She's coming back if you don't get what she's asked. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. Now I've heard people say, well, now this teaches us that we just have to keep on asking and keep on asking just like this little widow did. She just kept hounding him and just hound God and pester God until finally he'll give in. That's not what this is saying. Listen to what Jesus said. The Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. How could you compare God to an unjust judge or an unjust judge to God? He's teaching the very opposite of what most people think he's teaching in this verse. Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry unto him day and night? Now that didn't mean this crying about the same thing. He's talking about the whole, whole uh, people, his elect. Some of them are crying to him at night, some in the daytime, and so on. Which cry unto him day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. He has to bear long with some folks because they don't get in faith. The prayer of faith will save the sick, brings God on the scene. 
When you pray like I prayed for years, Lord, I prayed it's not working out, things are getting worse. He has to bear along with you because you're going to have to get in faith before anything happens from God. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Very opposite of what most people say. Well, you just have to keep hounding God. I heard one individual, and, and, I, and I'm not criticizing them, but I'm just showing you how they missed the point on radio years ago. They said, well, now I know some of these people uh, uh, can say they just pray one time and believe God, but said, now my faith is not that good. I just have to keep on praying and keep on praying and keep on praying. That proves you're in unbelief. If you believe you received when you prayed, why did you pray again the same way? All things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Now, either Jesus told a lie or he told the truth. I believe he told the truth. And you check out the things that Jesus taught against, about prayer. He said, don't use vain repetition. Here's what he said to me one time. He said, the problem is you pray too quick. <laughs> and that kind of upset my theology, you know, I mean, I pray too quick. Yeah, he said, you need to study the Word, confess the Word a week, a month, a year, or whatever it takes to cause faith to come, then pray the prayer of faith, and you'll get an answer. When I started doing that, I got more prayers answered the first three weeks than I had answered in 20 years all put together. Get the Word in you first. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing him. You must be fully persuaded. Jesus said, a good man out of the good deposit of his heart, he brings forth good things. How does he do that? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If faith is abundantly in the heart, you release that faith, and it becomes a prayer of faith. And you trust him. You ask, and you receive. Everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried him day and night before him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth, or this kind of faith on the earth? I believe he will. I believe he will. Because the word of faith is being taught throughout this nation. This is one of the uh, parables that has become a sacred cow to some folks and hold them in bondage. They think that it teaches that you just have to keep on, keep on, keeping on. But this woman came to him. It was her voice, the tone of her voice, and the authority in her voice that uh, got this wicked judge's attention that you couldn't possibly uh, relate God to an unjust judge. He said, he will avenge them speedily. Now, there's another passage of Scripture that uh, uh, go with me to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Matthew chapter 18. In Matthew 18, we begin with verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said, I say not unto thee until seven times, but seventy times seven. Now that put it out there where it has to have, you have to have faith. <laughs> seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven like unto a certain householder which went out early in the morning. Wait a minute. <laughs> I turned two pages. That didn't read right, I knew. <laughs> Therefore the kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, his wife and his children, and all that he had in payment to be made. Now in those days, they didn't just repossess your television set and your refrigerator. They took your kids and their, and their wife and everybody. And the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, loosed him, and forgave him the debt. Now notice what it says. He loosed him and forgave him the debt. That's what Jesus did to us. He forgave us. We owed a debt we couldn't pay, and he paid a debt. He paid our debt for us. Now, 
Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, loosed him, forgave him the debt. Now, did he forgive him or didn't he? Yeah, he forgave him. But the same servant went out and found a fellow servant which owed him a hundred pence. That's about $17. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat. In other words, he's choking him, saying, Pay me that thou owest. <laughs> now, the man's been forgiven $10 million debt. And he goes out, he's been forgiven that. He goes out and finds a fellow owes him about $17 and starts choking him. <laughs> Pay that thou owest me. And his fellow servant fell down and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servant saw what was done, they were sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee that debt. Now again he says, I forgave you the debt. Did he forgive him? Yes. Because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And the Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due him. Now, wait a minute. I thought he forgave the debt. He did. Twice he said he forgave him the debt. Reminded him that he forgave him the debt. Well, he don't owe the debt then. What is it that he owes then? He owes the other man forgiveness. That's what he owes. The Lord was wroth, delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not every one his brother that trespasses. Now the tormentor in that day was the jailer that had a cat of nine tails. They had glass and metal embedded into a whip. And they tormented them until they were willing to do what they wanted him to do. Now, you know, Jesus is not talking about he's going to put you in jail. He's telling, so likewise, your, your heavenly Father do also unto you, he will deliver you, have to deliver you to the tormentor. The tormentor is the devil. You find yourself in the hands of the devil if you don't forgive. And, and, and folk can pray for you till they wear all the hair off your head and nothing's going to change till you forgive. You may say, I wish to God I didn't have to forgive, but you read what Jesus said, if you don't forgive, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you your trespasses. Now, if you was perfect and didn't make any mistakes and didn't sin, didn't do anything wrong, uh, didn't make any mistakes, you might get by with that. But I don't think many folks is that way. We're going to make some mistakes. Forgive. Now, how do we forgive? Jesus tells you how to forgive. Go with me to Luke's gospel. Now, see, this is a, this is a sobering thought here because some people find their hands in, I mean, find themselves in the hands of the tormentor. And Satan has a right to them because they've violated the law of God of forgiveness. But he's not going to leave you there. He tells you how to get out of this mess. Go over here to the 17th chapter of Luke. <clears throat> Luke 17. An occasion that, uh, verse 3, Take heed to yourselves that thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. If he repent, forgive him. If he trespass against thee seven times in a day, now, see, there's certain things that a man might know, not know that he has sinned against you. You might have to rebuke him for something he's done. But nevertheless, we're going to have to forgive if we're going to get forgiven. He said, Take heed to yourself, thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, repent, forgive him. If he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn to thee, saying, I repent, I shall forgive him. Seven times in one day does the same thing. We might get by two or three times, but about the fourth or fifth time, we want to bust his lip. <laughs> we don't want to forgive him. I mean, this is a hard saying, isn't it? <clears throat> but now Jesus didn't leave us there. 
He, and the apostles said, Lord, increase our faith. At least they knew you're going to have to do it by faith. See, you can do things by faith. You can't do any other way. The only way you can enter into the grace of God is through faith. And it takes the grace of God to forgive folks sometimes. And the Lord said, now here's what he said. There's not one scripture in the Bible that says if you pray, God will give you more faith. Wouldn't that be good if we say, Lord, just give me more faith? They got tired of him saying, oh, you have little faith. They said, just give us some more faith. You know, Paul said, faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Get the word in your mouth. That will create faith. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree. Now, the Greek says you would say unto the sycamine tree. Be thou plucked up by the root, be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. The Greek says it would obey you. Now, that's strong. Well, now, what did, it sounds like he's talking about something else altogether. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, very small seed, but a mustard plant is a plant you cannot hybrid. Anything you do to that plant, it's going to be mustard. You can't cross-pollinate it with any other plant. It's going to be mustard, whatever you do to it. So Jesus is saying, if you have faith that cannot be changed under any circumstance, you would say to this tree, be plucked up by the root, be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. I was in a full gospel businessman meeting. Brother John, several years ago, and a fellow got up and he said, well, you know what the Bible says, pray to God and he'll remove the mountain. <laughs> Wasn't in my Bible. <laughs> no. And I was, teaching, I was teaching a seminar one time, and, and they had, a, had a, a guy come from another church, and he came in. Before they introduced me, he sang, Lord, pre please don't move the mountain. It'll make me strong to climb it. <laughs> unbelief dripping off of them like syrup off a of molasses bucket, you know. And <laughs> if you had faith as a mustard seed, you would say to this sycamine tree, be plucked up by the root, be planted in the sea, and it should obey you. It would obey you. Now, the inanimate object, he said, would obey you. Now, how are we going to solve this situation? See, the, the problem area here is unforgiveness. How do you deal with it? Jesus tells you right here. Now, this is a principle. It'll work in other things. But he's telling you how to get rid of unforgiveness. Jesus said, you can have what you say if you believe and doubt not in your heart. Look yourself in the mirror every morning and say, I, I may not want to forgive. I may wish to God I didn't have to forgive, but I see in the Word where I do have to forgive or I can't be forgiven. And you hear me saying it, I forgive them in Jesus' name. I hold no grudges. I shake it off. I let it go. I forgive them in Jesus' name. And you say that every morning and every evening and look your face, uh, yourself in the mirror and say it until faith comes. And he shall have whatsoever he saith. But you know what most people said? Every morning they said, uh, the Lord knows I'd like to forgive, but I can't. Those that say they can't and those that say they can are both right. Because you can have what you say. You confess the word. You, you find out you can have what you say, and you keep saying it until you change your mental track. You get a new uh, place burned in your brain that says, yes, we can forgive. We forgive by faith. It's not something you feel like doing. It's something you decide to do. You make a decision to do it. So he said... Say to the sycamine tree, be plucked up by the root, be planted in the sea. Now, you know, people say, you hear people say all the time, you know, well, I tell you, money just gets away from me. I just can't keep money. It just seems like it gets away from me. You know what that money is made out of? The tree. <laughs> it's made out of a tree. And they've been talking about it, and it's been obeying them all these years. <laughs> the power of words. Quirks. <laughs> Quirks work. Small, atomic, smallest atomic particle that they could find. They analyzed it, and, and, and they decided the best they could tell it was nothing but sound waves. Sound waves is what created everything. Sound waves can rearrange it. Now, we, we can't do it like God did. You're not going to do it that quick. 
But this is a principle of God, is a law of God, and it works when you work it. But Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Now, one of the problems is that sometimes people uh, don't spend the time to develop faith in the Word. But they know what the Word says. Uh, you know, the Lord said to me one time, He said, what some people call faith is not faith at all, just high expectation based on wrong information. You know, sometime back in the 70s when this Word was taught, people got the idea, well, all you got to do is say it. No, there's a lot more to it than saying it. You got to believe. Doubt not in your heart. Believe what you're saying will come to pass, and you got to zip your lip sometime. It's like uh, uh, J. Iris came to Jesus. His little daughter was at the point of death. He said, Come lay your, my da little daughter's at home at the point of death. Come lay your hands on her, and she'll be healed, and she shall live. That's faith talking, what? Well, Jesus just turned and started going to J. Iris' house. But before he gets down there, uh, the runner came and told J. Iris, said, don't trouble the master anymore. Your daughter's already dead. Bad news came. And when Jesus heard that, he said, fear not, only believe. Don't let fear come. Don't say anything, J. Iris. Not time to make a faith confession because you open your mouth now, you're going to undo what you said a while ago. Because he'd probably said something like, yeah, if you hadn't stopped to heal this Baptist lady, you got there in time to heal my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd have had a funeral the next day. But Jesus said, fear not, don't let fear come. I remember something the Lord said in one of our meetings one time. He said, uh, tears of self-pity and sorrow never release faith. Learn to release your faith in laughter. Learn to release your faith in laughter. See, you, you can have a pity party and you'll get in unbelief and depressed. But if you'll keep God's Word in your mouth, or just keep your mouth shut sometime, it's, it, that's basically what Jesus said to him, J. Iris, zip your lip. Only believe. Believe what? Believe what he said while ago when faith was high. You think his faith was as high as it was? He said, you come lay your hands on my daughter, she'll be healed and she shall live. He could see that happening. But then the runner came and said, too late, she's already dead. Jesus said, fear not. What will fear do to faith? Take Peter, for instance. <laughs> he saw Jesus walking on the water. Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come. He said, come enough faith in that one word. He just stepped out of the boat, impetuous Peter. And he, he walked on the water to go to Jesus, but he looked at the waves and the wind, so boisterous and fearing, he began to sink. Fear took his faith away. Now, you know, if you analyze that, if you're going to analyze it right, it looked like Peter would have looked and said, I never saw anybody walk on the water. I guess the only time you walk on water is when there's a storm on. Glory to God, I'm going to get in on this. <laughs> no, he got out there and he's walking on the water and then he said, ooh, look at the wave. Look at, had nothing to do with what he's doing. I mean, can you walk on a swimming pool when, when the uh, wind's not blowing? No. You don't begin to sink, you go ka -chug. <laughs> so his faith left by degrees beginning to sink. So fear causes faith to dwindle. So here's Jairus. Jesus said, fear not, only believe. Believe what you said a while ago when faith was high. Your faith don't always stay at the same level. And you need to learn that. And, and, and when, when there's bad news comes, keep your mouth shut. I heard Jerry Savelle say one time, we need to, uh, the Lord told him, said, you need to learn the vocabulary of silence. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Just keep your mouth shut. There's, a, there's times that it's not time to make a faith confession. You ought to have that already built into you and then just rest on what you've already believed. It's important that we understand that faith just stands there and stands there and stands there until they receive. You have to stand your ground. You remember what it says about Abram? 
Hallelujah. Isn't that good news? He says, uh, it wasn't Abram, it was uh, Joseph. He says, until the time of his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Boy, I mean, they threw him in the well, sold him into slavery, ended up being the doer of everything done in that country. And finally, the time of the word of the Lord came. But until that, the word of the Lord tried him. And you may go through some places that it seems like the word of the Lord's trying you. It's the enemy trying your faith, but hold fast to the word, and eventually you'll come out on top. Just like Joseph did. He became the doer of everything that was done in the prison. He took over the whole country of Egypt. He was over the whole thing. Uh, uh, only the king was above him in some matters, and he was over all the things of the, the country. Faith works. Faith works. He had the word of the Lord. He didn't let it slip from him. I mean, if anybody could have lost faith, it could have been him, but he just stayed with it. He could still see that vision that he had, that people were going to be bowing to him, and the Lord revealed it to him. That was the word of the Lord to him. This is the word of the Lord to us. This is our promised land. It belongs to us. Through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the Word of God. We're framing our world daily. So it's important that we understand the Scriptures and relate them as God reveals it in His Word. Hallelujah. Father, we thank You for Your Word, for Your Holy Spirit, for the anointing of God upon that Word. We pray that every person under the sound of our voice would be doers of the Word of God, and that Word will quicken and strengthen them and guide them in all the affairs of life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, raise your hand and say this, I'm a believer. I'm a stronger believer now than when I came. And I'm a doer of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. If you would like a copy of the program you have seen today, call our toll-free order line at 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at www.charlescaps.com. The program is available in CD or audio cassette, DVD or VHS videotapes for $12 plus shipping and handling. Just ask for the program number listed here and be sure to specify what format you want when ordering. We are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. To order the product offered on today's program, send your check or money order to Charles Capps Ministries, or to place your order on Visa or MasterCard, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area.